Hi guys and welcome to this final video for Unit 6.1. In this video we're going to take a look at disruptive technology. Somewhat ironically I'm actually using a disruptive technology at the moment to record this video on Zoom. So let's have a think about exactly what a disruptive technology is. A disruptive technology is not just a new technology. It's a technology that completely changes and disrupts beyond all recognition a specific field. So an example of a disruptive technology would be something, uh, something like um, internet mobile, something like Skype. So before we were very, very used to having uh, to pay for individual calls and the concept of having a video call was something that didn't really exist. Skype has came, come along and other variations of that like WhatsApp have come along and they completely changed that business model. So now Skype and WhatsApp are virtually free or at point of consumption, they're virtually free. And this has disrupted the whole industry. So there's a couple of other te specific technologies that we're going to look at that are already highly disruptive. But we'll play this video through on, it will help you to understand what a disruptive technology is. Today, the uh, catchphrase, if you like, is disruptive technology. It's disturbing to attach the word disruptive to technology because most of the time we like to think of technology as assisting us. So why should it disrupt? The very reason why it is coined disruptive technology because the changes that we are seeing going on in the world today has the uh, ability to change our whole of system. Uh, take Uber for instance, everybody knows about this taxi uh, application. Previously we set up uh, taxi fleets, we create a taxi company, a taxi booking system and we look for customers. Uber starts by looking for the customers first, then the taxi community, then the vehicular population, and then after that, attaching them to a platform that allows them uh, to have their needs fulfilled in a different way. And so they start from a different point, but they end up changing the whole system. Now, today we, we, we talk about taxi, the largest taxi company in the world, so to speak, doesn't own taxis by and large. The largest movie house doesn't own a cinema. In future, the largest bank may not own branches, and so on and so forth. So what will people do? I think. Uh, as leaders, we need to be able to paint to our worker community, uh, our colleagues, this possibility of a future reality. Not to uh, incite fear, but to actually encourage some degree of motivation and passion to keep ahead of that curve. So those disruptive technologies, there's lots of them in our past, are absolutely essential. Now, um, most people are watching this are considerably younger than me. I grew up in a world where basically, for all intents and purposes, computers did not exist. You certainly did not own a computer. And then the concept of the personal computer came along and it displaced the typewriter. I had a typewriter as a child. Now they're ridiculous pieces of technology and they're, they're quite incredible that people manage to use uh, typewriters. So you got the personal computer and then you got the Windows operating system and then emails come along and then cell phones and then laptops and then mobile com computing and then smartphones and then cloud computing and social networking. So all of these things were sequences of individual disruptive technologies. So when you first had a computer, it was a great big thing that sat on a table in the side of your room and it wasn't connected to anything else. It was a standalone computer and you used to put these strange things called floppy disks in there and you certainly didn't use it to communicate with anybody. And so we got these barrage of disruptive technologies that have come along and caused us to use the computer in the way that we do and has caused the computer 
for, for me to have this conversation with you over YouTube and using Zoom. So one of those technologies, and we have looked at them before, are drones. And I'm really into drones. Um, I think they're absolutely fantastic. I personally do own one. Um, that's one of those DGI ones. I just use it for video making. Um, but there's lots of other uses for drones and there are uses for drones that we don't know that we're going to have in the future. And let's have a look at this one, which is absolutely incredible.我是一名指导无人机飞手下次作业时直接调用数据就可以了最终的喷洒效果甚至重要的现在有了无人机打药一年以来更方便，效率提高了很多。大家无人机执保解决方案给我很大的信心。今年我要扩张无人机执保业务，为更多的农户服务。Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed practicing your your Poussinois there. I'm going to encourage you to have a look at the details on page 623. Um, just to dig down into that technology a little bit more, um, you can see that the potential impact and the impact that has, that has had already on resolving the agricultural imperative, you know, it really is a groundbreaking technology and changes the way that farms operate. What's particularly interesting about the drones is none of it is actually new technology. Drones have been around a long time, batteries have been around a long time, spraying crops have been around a long time, GPS, those things, technologies have actually been around a long time, but it's the convergence of several technologies together to make a drone that has really made the difference. So quite often a Technology only becomes disruptive when you get multiple existing technologies converging together. And you can see that this is very, very disruptive in a good way. And you can see that there are applications there in uh, fighting fires. There are applications there with agriculture, as, as we've seen, the construction industry, um, surveillance as well. Um, we actually, in Hong Kong, use drones quite a lot when we have a, a, a stadium concert uh, 
to help with mobile coverage, they'll actually have drones flying in the air to make temporary, uh, temporary, um, temporary aerials for, for the mobile phones. So we've seen this technology all of the time. We're also seeing very, very close to having actually drone taxis flying around. And there's been quite a lot of fuss about drone delivery systems. So think about the importance of that convergence of several technologies. We're going to go on to have a think about the importance of 3D printing in a different video. But then again, you could start 3D printing these drones. So again, that will take it up to the next level of, uh, of disruption. So drones have had a lot of bad press. Quite often what people think about with drones is, and you will see this when you read the guide, uh, drones, military drones, um, it's disruptive in a very bad way because it means that if you have military drones coming in, you don't, it really destroys the concept of sovereign air base, uh, sovereign airspace. So you can get military drones coming in, stealing secrets, bombing people. Um, you know, it really makes it very, very difficult for you to properly have control over your airspace. And uh, we've seen drones cause lots of problems in around Heathrow Airport. It stopped Heathrow Airport. Um, there's a big thing um, in the UAE where it closed down Dubai Airport as well. So it really is a problem. But drones, there are a lot of good in drones. And the UAE, as that disruptive technology, is actually leading the pack in having drones for good. We actually don't know how we're going to use these drones because it's an emerging and disruptive technology. If you want to have a job, certainly the field of drones, there's going to be a very, very high demand for skilled people in the area of drones. So if you fancy working in this area, that's going to be very high demand for your skills. So we'll have a look at this uh, BBC video about drones for good. One technology the government in this region has really taken to heart recently are these things, the drones. We've seen them being used for classy photography, for gratuitous selfies, and of course for deliveries, with both Amazon in the US and Alibaba in China considering them for getting packages about the place. But here in the UAE, they've started looking for other uses for drones. And that's led to the competition going on over there. It's called Drones for Good. Dubai doesn't do things by halves, so this is a big deal here. Teams from all around the world have flown in to show the judges their prototypes. The task to demonstrate how drones can improve people's lives. And welcome to the first Drones for a Good event here in the UAE, which is a two-day celebration. There's a million dollars up for grabs for the winners in the international category, so this is a serious business. And you wouldn't believe the number of issues that can be solved with a drone. At least, when there's so much money up for grabs. From heavy lifters to heat-seeking poacher detectors, all drone life is here. For example, I didn't know that fog was an issue in Dubai, but it is, or at least it was, until the team from Khalifa University invented a drone which gets rid of it. From several years, we have a lot of pil car pileup accidents and disasters happening because of the fog. And also the flight, uh, the airway companies and people are really getting annoyed when their flight is diverted. We are doing an extraordinary experiment, an extraordinary environment. Using a concept similar to cloud seeding, which causes rain, this drone can carry 40 kilograms of a salty solution, which it sprays over the fog, breaking the dew point and dissipating the mist. Now, you'd need about seven of these to clear a runway within 20 minutes, allowing pilots to take off and land safely. This is an autonomous drone. So it's just, an autonomous drone. Yeah, with no need for joystick to control it. Really? Yeah, just we put the GPS coordination of place that it need to go and spray, and it goes, spray the solution and come back to the base station. One thing I did know about Dubai was its preference for the tall and the fabulous. And with all this high-rise glass about, well, you do need something to keep it all clean. 
So bring on the flying squeegee. It has a washer, it has a squeegee, and with this drone, we are capable to clean up um, a maximum of 40 square meters per flight. Now, personally, I'm a little nervous about flying drones close to buildings, but at least the beauty of this dude is that the sponges protect the blades, so it's less likely to crash when you're wiping your Burj Khalifa. <laughs> and crash protection is something being taken to an entirely new level by team flyability. This is fascinating. <laughs> this is, I've never seen a drone like this before. So what, what's the point? So this cage can rotate around the inner frame of the robot. So the part with the, with the propellers and the motor. Yeah. So that if the drone collides against the obstacles, only the cage will rotate. With, and and, uh, and the inside will just stay uh, vertical. This kind of gimbal thing here is fantastic because that's what they strap astronauts into, isn't it? To, yeah. to spin them around. Can you give us some examples of where you see this sort of drone being used? So basically this drone can go uh, anywhere where other drones cannot go, like uh, inside collapsed buildings, anywhere where like there's a lot of trashes yeah. and where you cannot have a perfect control of the robot. I mean you can bounce off the walls. Yeah, that's the point. Because I point. don't think there's any other drone here that could probably No, they probably cannot wall. do that. The pilot is actually flying the robot inside the house, so he does not even see the robot anymore. He actually only uses the video link from the drone. Whoa! <laughs> You're in the final. What's the competition looking like? We are quite confident today that we will have uh, a better demonstration so that we'll have like a good score. That's amazing! Okay, so you can see there about the convergence of technologies. You can see that it's disruptive. We don't actually know how these drones are going to be used in the future, but it's also ma it's making great differences to people's lives. Also, one final point is that the degree of autonomy and automation that you have in these things and the de-skilling of those jobs. So you can see the significance of this as a disruptive technology. Okay, so our final video, we will have a look at 3D printing. <laughs>